hit the record button. Here comes this bumper. This is the Ink Pulp Podcast. Every time I see that, it gets classier and classier, or the opposite direction. It gets mm-hmm. like, we need to redo that thing, man. Pure that class. Does not have enough production value. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us once great. again. It is oh, episode, it's got to be episode 131 by now. No? 133, brother. Jesus, uh, I, Eric. One day, one day. One okay. day I'm telling you, it's never going to be as good as 131, you know, two episodes ago. It's we all, well, actually, it's, every it's probably going to be too much because Carl is here. All right. That better not be the Ramon us. episode. I, I got I to gotta outdo the Ramon episode. That's it. That's that's the goal. Oh, it's got to be easy. He sucks. So. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's why they don't come back oh, because of comments <laughs> like that. And Bozo's like, this. thank you for joining us for another train wreck episode. That uh, only a person like Carl was going to be able to uh, to salvage. Sean Mateo, thank you for being here. But more importantly, as I said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to butcher his last name because I don't know if I've ever said it out loud. Carl Kershaw. It's perfect. There it is. Thank you for awesome. joining us, man. Hey guys, thank you for your time. Oh, thank you, man. Oh, Thanks for having me. I, I gotta say, thank you for salvaging. First off, I think Carl might draw the best Batman in the history of Batman. Just well, that's that not there. true. Look, I, I'm, I'm Batman, ripping off uh, Jim Aparo and I, I know, Lopez but it still and... has you in it. It's so classic. It's like a it's 70s a Batman. It's beautiful. I love your Batman. Thank you. Okay, so can I, can I tell you something? When we how said about, that hey, Sean, we were... How about mine on Mr. Freeze? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's ask Eric how you feel. Oh, really? Carl, you, you, you don't know about this inside joke, but Eric hates my Mr. Freeze issue. Oh, the whole thing? My, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. Every line. It became an inside joke. So every time, you know, <clears throat> he, almost tanked his, he almost his tanked twice. his career. You know what I mean? Like he was on an upward climb. <laughs> so one missed And he wanted to show people that he was human. So he drew the <laughs> crappiest Batman Mr. Free story that anyone's ever seen in print. So I, can I, I disagree. You, like, and I when, think Mateo does a wonderful Batman too. Thank you. Should Sean, I tell you though? I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm nervous about drawing Batman all the time. Um, because it's like, uh, I, I just don't think I'm suited to it ever. You know, like it just has oh, none man. of the, um, none of the, you know, when you, when you imagine yourself doing a Batman story, there's just a lot of black involved. Sure. You know, there's sure. a lot of shadow. Yeah. I don't do any of that. It's I all wide right. open. Okay. That's and I always I feel like I'm yours. like I'm I'm short shrifting people. I'm like, oh, yours is like the Super Friends Batman. It's I mean it's the 70s. No, it's Batman. like it's like a Garcia Lopez bedsheets Batman. That's yeah, exactly, exactly. It exactly. That's exactly it. <laughs> that's hey, that's not too shabby though. No, that that's, that's, that's what I'm going for. <laughs> now that works. Okay, can I give you a little bit of context? Two weeks ago, when we knew I knew we had to bump this for a little bit because number one, we got six schedules didn't line up correctly, but primarily because I couldn't keep keep my health in check. But when I told these guys, hey, let's get prepared for some of our guests. Let's just not bring people on and talk bozo subject matters like these guys are experts on, right? So immediately, when I before I could even finish that sentence, Carl, they were like, oh, we got a ton of stuff to ask him. Now, to be fair, I typically carry this, this freaking podcast. Like, just carry it on my back like a overworked camel. But <laughs> they, they were saying... They were saying they were ready for you. So we're going to see whether or not they are. I'm going to hit this mute button and not talk for 40% of this damn thing. Okay. See yeah. if they can care. Okay. So first shit, you know, I'm going to start shitting on Eric immediately because, This you is know, what I'm here for. Awesome. So first of all, like our podcast two weeks ago would have been perfect because you would have ended the your kickstarter campaign like right at the you know when we basically when we would we would start recording the mm-hmm. campaign would end exactly by it then it would have been so, like like i just ran the boston marathon and then yeah. confetti yeah. and then i just immediately turn this on and just start yeah yeah, yeah. celebration like, interview the after run interview would be awesome amazing you could you could have given us you know your direct what were you feeling in the moment but you know, we have no, a weak, remember. weak, weak Filipino guy here who you know <laughs> screwed that up for everyone. So it's weak sorry, something. guys. It's it's Eric. Eric's hey, fault. Carl, just really quick, can you give? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I wait, remember. Wait, wait, you, hold on, you, 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 hold on, hey, hold on. What, You're what, not following what? up. 
Shut up. You're not following up on that campaign. Carl, can you talk about the campaign for a little bit, please? Because these guys are never going to lob. I was about to. Them. That was my He was going to do an awful to job. Talking to the that. campaign. Someone has control issues. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. I, I will. First of all, I wanted to thank all you guys for the support during that campaign because it was amazing um, from all the retweeting. Mateo, the cover was fantastic. I have it upstairs. It's still in the awesome. box. Awesome. Glad, yeah. glad you got it. Oh, it's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, just the incredible amount of support. I think one of the reasons I like uh, I like doing these things is that it kind of um, it's an excuse to, uh, to to like reconnect with people who are doing a lot of, especially a lot of indie stuff. Like you don't hear much from like you run these things, and then like almost everyone you associate with in the in like mainstream comics just disappears. Like you never hear anything from them, but. Um, but all your all your pals and buddies who who kind of do their own stuff show up. Well, that's up honestly hard. that's that's really what we're focusing on with the podcast is is this shift that a lot of us are making from being mainstream freelancers to doing our own thing and working our careers as a as a business. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's uh, and we were talking about it recently. Like, I like this new uh, this new you know turn that uh, the podcast has taken because. You know, we're starting to having more and more guests and each guest is offering their different perspective on, you know, how to do it differently, you know. So I think this is a really nice chance to to explore, uh, you know, new new options. So, uh, by the way, like, let's uh, let's uh, give some names to, you know, the campaign was the for a project called uh, that transit uh, Tanager. Yep. Is that That's Tanager? Right. No, yeah. so, and that's and, your okay. creation entirely, right, Carl? Yeah, it was. Um, it was a thing I drew uh, when the pandemic. Because I, I, we were working on um, Brendan Fletcher and I were working on uh, an image comic series called Isola, which I guess right. we're still sort of working on. I haven't like looked at it in a couple of years. Um, I get a lot of questions about it. <laughs> but uh, so what happened was Lord Brendan just, got sick. He got COVID early in the, like, like when everyone was just starting. Yeah, we can hear about that. Yeah, he got it real hard. And uh, and it's also exactly when um, all the printers shut down. So we we finished um, our second volume, the trade. Like uh, we basically sent it off to the printer and then the printers shut down. So nothing was going on. We were sitting at home and I just... Um, I was working on another story in my head. I, I was like, I was trying to formal. This is another fun thing to maybe talk about with you guys, because Eric, I know you're writing your own book. Um, you guys are probably writing your own stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I was writing another thing for myself and um, I was trying to very formally write it. You know, like I've got like notebooks and of, like full of, you know, revisions and different arcs and character sheets and all this kind of stuff. And I just, I just can't do it. Like, I just find I can't do that. So I, I I'd spent like a year trying to create this thing uh, and write it quote unquote properly. And then uh, one night I just had enough. I was just banging my head against the wall and I just had an idea. I just thought like, let me just do a thing that is short, that I can finish something that is manageable, uh, that I can kind of bang out. And I came up with this story. It was like a little sci-fi thing. And I just started drawing it. It was really fun. Like, no really script. Just no, no. Well, I wrote some notes. Like I wrote like yeah. literally, I had yeah. like one page of just dialogue. Okay. No oh, okay. names, nothing. It was like and there was no plan. And so I drew this thing over, you know, a few weeks, just kind of casually drew it. And then I threw it up online when it was done. And um and I thought, oh maybe, you know, maybe I'll print this someday and so and, and how long was that that story like 20 pages okay mm -hmm. and did you thumbnail pages. it entirely first no wow. i've tried doing that i can't do it i so can't you do just it. started drawing it yeah i like for all of my work i've tried like i've i know it makes sense to thumbnail stuff i never every time i do it i get maybe two or three pages in and then i can't um i don't know if it's uh i don't know if i get bored part of it is just i can't see I can't see the pages at thumbnail size. Like mm -hmm. I always had to work at full size. And I know that's the opposite of most people's experience. You know, like you, you can like thumbnail something and see how your composition's working, but mm -hmm. I kind of just have to go from the, you know, like I, I have the page sort of in my head, like I have the beats in my head and, um, and then I just have to kind of fool around with them. Sometimes I just end up with like a panel that I know the shape of it. I know what happens in it, but I don't actually know, what the angle is or anything and i'll, I'll just yeah. fill it in according to what I'll, what i've 
you know, what else I've drawn on the page. Yeah. So you, you work <laughs> page by page then? I work page by page, which is stupid. And it's, um, it, it, t- everything takes longer because, you know, you don't really have, um, there's no real system, you know, like, you know, right. if you do, when you do thumbnail out a whole issue, then you're kind of like, okay, I'm doing my, re- here's all my thinking work. You know, I'm going to mm-hmm. do all that. And then I'm going to do all my penciling work, which is like a little more casual. And then you're just kind of in the inking finishing stage where you can kind of listen to, you know, <laughs> watch movies or whatever and do your thing. I've yeah. never had that. I'm almost like slog through a page and then like, I, I'm not even thinking about the next page usually. Wow. So, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah so that's that's kind of how i i don't know i guess i just i i don't know how else to work did you work that way on gotham academy i uh i sort of um well yeah actually i did i mean i was so um, did you ever get to a point where like you finished a page and because it was never thumbnail and you turned it in and it needed to be redone not really because well on gotham academy we were i was working from uh scripts from ben oh right, right, right oh guys yeah so, yeah you had a script yeah yeah i had a script for that so if i've got a script it's like um then i really don't worry about it if i'm writing stuff myself i can kind of like uh you know um sort of unwrite myself into a hole <laughs> but generally mm-hmm. it works out okay especially for something like this where you're like you know it doesn't matter how many pages it is so if i you know if i need an extra page i'll just throw it in there so that yeah. first story you told that was all that was all released digitally correct yeah it's still online for free so this is what i want to do now all the time like, i just want to put stuff online for free everything yeah. mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then um let people read it like it or not like it and then um build a bit of an audience and then uh print it later whether it's crowdfunding or whether it's you know giving it to image or somebody to so collect. what when you have a script, you, 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 are you usually really respectful of the script, or you still use this method or of? I think of, I'm I'm respectful. I mean, no, well, respect, I did that. no, sorry, sorry. I was translating from Italian to English, and I, I said respectful, meaning that. Uh, sorry, let's erase the the word. Like, do you do you really follow the script a lot? Speaking of panel by panel, or you you still you know change and go with instinct does it make sense? um does it, it totally makes sense and i think respectful still works yeah i think <laughs> respectful is the yeah. perfect word yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. you did great um i'm awesome as usual okay of yeah. course uh, <laughs> no i'm I, I stick pretty closely to the script sometimes i will if anything i will add panels just to, okay. Like, okay i like gotcha. i like cutting way to like character reactions and things a lot yeah i like I a lot of too. silent beats so yeah. um so i'll do that but never i won't deviate too much okay and gotcha. I, actually i haven't worked from um like mark's ambassador script was the only script i've worked from in the last few years because everything else has been stuff that i've done myself or that um like if i'm working with brendan and we're just kind of riffing like we kind of write yeah. that stuff together um so it's all kind of casual but um but mark's scripts are really tight and they're really good so it was very so, easy. yeah yeah, Carl, they are. Let me and I love I love that, you know, I love when I saw the first scripts that Mark sent me, not for the ambassador for previous projects, like seeing like pages with three, four panels. It was like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel I guilty. That, I feel you know guilty what? if I'm only drawing three panels on a page. Yeah, <laughs> it feels weird. It feels weird. And also after a while, I was so, you know, happy and and uh, and I was so in my head, I was like, Oh, I only had three, four panels. I got so much space and so much room that sometimes my panels wouldn't have enough room for the for the dialogues and everything because mm-hmm. I was so you know so excited. I felt so free that I was like, oh fuck, I, I forgot that you know I need more more room here <laughs> and there. So I, I apologize to Mark, especially in the first few issues. I was like, oh sorry, Mark, too much freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Too much freedom for me. <laughs> but by the way, uh, so do you have a plan for for Tanager? Like, how many how many issues is it gonna be? Do you have an ending already in, in mind? Uh, you... No, there's no ending. Oh. Well, there there is a there is like a long term ending. Like, I, once I started uh, drawing it, I ended up because um, it was never really meant to be more than an issue. So, but then I started getting a lot of ideas for it mm-hmm. and i sort of know where it would ultimately end but uh i think my plan right now is um i'm i'm halfway through a second issue 
And mm -hmm. I think I'll probably do four or five issues and then do, I think what I'll probably do is, is crowdfund probably four issues and then maybe see if image just wants to collect it. Yeah. Collect and, uh, it. Uh, well, it let me way. back up a second. Cause I'm, I'm interested in this whole, the whole big picture you, you have with this project. So you did the, the first chapter for free and put it online. Mm -hmm. Did you put it on your website? That's where you put it. Yep. And did you format it any differently because it was going to be digital or did you keep it pretty page by page? No, it's exactly the same. It's just, a. Uh, it's so, not a great online reading experience. But, okay, but, I'm um, just curious. Yeah. So that, so you put that out for free and then you crowdfunded the first issue. Does that include the chapter that was online? That is exactly the chapter that was online, oh, except, okay. oh. except I've done, yeah, except I've done um, an extra eight page color story to okay. go along with it. So and did plus, you find that, that offering it for free and then driving a, a crowdfunding campaign to publish where, where the bulk of the material was stuff that was for free, it actually helped the campaign? Yep. It is my entire philosophy now. Yeah. Explain give that. It, give I, it all I think the way that's something that, that is really important it. nowadays is we as artists and, and entrepreneurs, we it's it's really about what we can give away that will build our futures. Mm -hmm. Did you I think know that's that? something that I, I learned when I, you know, in 2007 or whenever I when I started doing web comics, because prior to that, I was just doing, you know, Marvel DC gigs. And then I, I just for myself and what, what I, you know, I was sharing a space with Ramon and Cameron and a bunch of other guys in Toronto. And we started doing, um, we, we were just burned out on like working from other people's scripts and drawing. Them right. And that was called, yeah. what was the name of that, that crew? Something X transmission. Oh X? yeah. Yeah. Originally it was called that crowd called transmission X. Okay. Um, and so we each made up a, you know, just came up with an idea for a web comic and we each picked a day and then uh, my day was Wednesdays and we're just like, okay, publish a thing every week, publish a new episode every week. And the deal we made was that if you missed your week, you had to buy everybody lunch. So, it was, <laughs> oh, so and I never missed a week. Like it was the only thing that actually motivated me to be disciplined in that. <laughs> and so, and I did it for like seven years. I did, you know, I did it every week for a long time. And then I took a break when I had kids and then now I've gone back to it again. But um, what I learned, what, so when I started doing that, um, I didn't know anything about that landscape, you know, the online web comics landscape. And I reached out to a lot of people who had been doing it, like the PVP guys, Scott Kurtz. Um, and a lot of his friends were doing a podcast, which was really yes, helpful. And, um, and I just met a lot of people in that community. And I, and I just got a larger picture of what, you know, how they worked. Like that entire business model well, it was ad supported at the time, which and that kind of fell apart. But like that entire model is do stuff regularly, give it away for free, build an audience, sell books. That's fucking awesome. And it and it's and it works beautifully. Yeah. Like it, it's like I since I learned that, I've never had any fear of giving stuff away or of piracy. I don't give a shit about piracy. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right. Like I just yeah, you know, it's like it's Tanager is like, it's a completely unknown thing, right? Like, it's like, I've, I've got a bit of a readership or a following because of other work I've done, but, but it's like, um, I, don't, I hate to use the, the word intellectual property because it's so cold and stupid, but like, it's like oh, a it completely, completely unknown <laughs> IP, right? Like it's so, mm -hmm. um, I think without some people, like, I think having given it away, you know, got people familiar with it. Got sure. a little bit of buzz around. I yeah. mean, I actually had offers from publishers yeah. when I put not only, it out for free. And sorry to interrupt, Carl, but not yeah. only that, I think that in general, uh, by giving it away at first, you're like, I don't know. I think you activate this mechanism in which, oh, this guy's giving me something like, okay, so whenever it comes, you know, my turn. I'm going to give it something back, you know, yeah, it's, I think you're right. this kind of, you know, exchange, I think, I don't yeah, know. I, don't I think know it builds it trust makes, too, you know, yeah, like trust. It, yeah. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't feel like a, like a grift, you know, like yeah. it's like, yeah, I think there's a lot of trust there on both sides. You know, people, you know, people trust that you're going to pro provide them with some quality and you're yeah, trusting I, that I, people aren't going to screw you by republishing it and giving it away. And did you you and you only give it away on your website? That's the only place where people can go to read it, right? 
Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I, it's so I built, I rebuilt my website a few years ago, um, to kind of behave like, well, just to, to be a hub for all the stuff I do. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I kind of, I built it to, to emulate, um, Patreon, not, not in, not aesthetically, but, um, but in that I built a subscription model into it. So oh, you really? can, yeah, you can, um, you can, uh, become a patron of my website and what that gets you is just access to like a lot, like I'll do a lot of videos or right. blog posts or things like that. But, but, but the uh, comics but, wasn't behind, Tanager wasn't behind that. Wall. No. So the way I, the way I handle it, like the other comic, the abominable Charles Christopher comic I do is just free for everyone. Yeah. All, always the Tanager stuff I did. Um, I'll post a page every time I finish it. And those are, those are locked for uh, patrons. Uh -huh. But as soon as the chapter's done, I just make it available for everybody. So if you want to follow along and see process stuff and see it as it comes out, then there's like a you know monthly. It's a pay what you want, um, no tiers or anything. It's just like whatever you That's feel awesome. like. That's awesome. And then um, yeah, and then once the chapter's done, it's just free. So right now, chapter two is updating, and people who are subscribers can read it. Do you keep yourself to any sort of schedule in, in terms of putting up a new page? Like, are you trying to do a page a week or just whenever it's done? I was trying to do a page a week, but um, that fell apart as soon as I, you know, as soon as I, I can't multitask very well. Right, so, right. so things fall by the wayside. So as soon and, as and, I take on any other work. Yeah. And how long does it take you to end all the website thing, you know? Because you mean to, to deal with like, like a lot of work as well. So I was curious to, you know. Well, building it took a little while. Like I just kind of took some time to do that because oh, yeah, oh, sorry I, on, a, yeah. on a daily basis on like, a daily basis i do very little yeah. oh very little okay yeah <laughs> like i do like i try to i try to give people some content there every you know like every well i send them whenever i do a page or a, a strip of something i will i'll mail it to them um it's been while i was doing the kickstarter i i was not doing much website stuff at all but i try to basically just um I think people are happy if you just share stuff with them kind of there first. Like I just want to make sure like if I'm doing something, I just make it available there first. Like I did a giveaway thing in the Kickstarter. Like there's, I, I did some embroidered patches and I just said, those are free for everyone who's subscribing. Awesome. Um, it's awesome. pretty casual, you know, it's like, yeah. it's not a ton of X. It's not really a lot of extra work at all. It's just kind of updating people. Um, how often do you put like a, like a process post or like a video or stuff like that up? Um, I was doing it every like, few weeks, oh, okay. Maybe. but, but mm -hmm. aside from that, it's usually just like a, a dedicated email. That's like, here's a thing I'm drawing or, yeah. um, you know, here's yeah. a cover image I did or whatever. And, and actually the, the most fun ones to do are, um, you know, like I did for a couple of the DC things I did, um, I did uh, long blog posts that are just like full pro like here's, here's the. Like just here's how it went down from A to Z. Like here's like here's the yeah. ideas I sent to the editor. Here's the script I came up with. Like here's all my rough pages. Here's all the inked pages. Here's like some of the changes that happened. Here's what went wrong with like the colorist or the lettering or you know it's just like a blow by blow of a is that even a word blow by blow play by play <laughs> of a, of um you know how the whole thing came together oh. and I I find like I would want to read that you know like I like seeing people's have like, you toyed like, with oh, the yeah, inside I, baseball process stuff? What What do you think the benefit of having the paywall is? Like, do you do you feel you you need that? Because you're talking about giving away stuff for free. Do you, Do you feel like the paywall is is um is is beneficial to you? Well, to me, it's I mean, it's a little bit of extra income. Like it 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 actually does because it's not a lot, you know. Like I don't have a ton of people on there, but it's um it does go a little bit of the way to um, helping me justify working on all this stuff for free. Cause a yeah. lot of the time, because I'm doing very little, uh, you know, um, mainstream publisher work. Um, I'll be drawing like half the time I'm drawing stuff and my wife's, my wife asks me what I'm doing. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm working for free. Like I'm just drawing a bunch of, <laughs> I'm just drawing a bunch of stuff and trusting that it's gonna, it's gonna pay off later. And it's, a, there's a lot of that. So, so any kind of monthly um, revenue in that gotcha. regard helps, it helps a little bit, like helps offset yeah. some of the, that's yeah. Yeah. That's some what of I the, uh, the, the nervousness. Cause that's the but, challenge. I mean, that's the big challenge for me is figuring out how to, 
financially survive while doing a book that I want to do for free, essentially? Well, it it takes, yeah, I know what you mean. It takes some, um, it helps to have a pandemic. <laughs> but um, it, it would take a while to build up. I don't know. Do you, do you guys run a, like a Patreon or whatnot for, uh, yep. for the show or anything like that? Mm -mm. Nope. For me, it's like. I mean, we're, we'll be starting because now that I'm in the show, the numbers are going up. Yeah. So this is becoming, you know, starting to become a big deal. Just That's why my sheer name popular, is sheer Mateo star Double Up Scalera. I, I mean, I, I, look, I gotta I admit, numbers double up. <laughs> so, so, you know, <laughs> you know, Mateo, I gotta admit, you are right. And in, in that episode with my food that came out last week did the biggest numbers we've ever had. <laughs> I mean, so I mean, double up Scalera do. does it again. <laughs> you know? So, so yeah, we might think about doing something. You know. And um, and yeah. Oh, by the way, when we were talking about the piracy, piracy, how do you say mm -hmm. piracy? Piracy. Pi piracy yeah. it, you reminded me of uh, another guy who's not in comic books. It's uh, it's it's a comedian. Uh, you you'll know it. It's uh, Louis C.K. Mm -hmm. Is the one who started putting everything on his website and not using the traditional channels. Mm -hmm. So I'm in his uh, emailing email list. Yeah, me too. And uh, you don't have to pay to be on it, so it's a, the the structure is a little bit dif different. But every time something comes out, you have to pay, but it's like ten dollars for a you know a comedy special. There's a new one who's just released, just been released recently, and it's just. Did you watch it yet, Mateo? Not the new. I, I watched the live version, mm. and, and now is uh, is just released the version. Oh, like, that's the one you saw in the line. Uh, no, no, it's uh, completely new stuff. Right. It's okay. the guy's a genius. I know. He's so and 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 his email every time that you know he's got to promote a new in the newsletter, you know the the new special coming out. He's like, okay, on the website you'll find for ten bucks you'll have you'll have access to the streaming, or you can even download the whole file. And from then on, it's up to you. I it's cool. out of my control. I hope you don't start, you know, sending it to your friends. And I hope that you'll tell your friends to buy it as well. But if you want, there's nothing I can do about it. And he's still doing great. So yeah. because mm -hmm. once he's, you know, somebody's that open and honest, it's, it's something happens. At least I'm talking about myself. I don't know if it happens to everyone. But, you know, it's like, yeah, fuck it. I'm not going to give it to other people. You know, not... Even if you did. I mean, I think... Uh... I it's still, Neil, yeah, it's still promotion. Yeah, yeah. like it was Neil Gaiman said, and I'll just, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, uh, I remember reading uh, something he said a few years ago, which was basically that, like, no, like ev everyone's favorite book is something that someone probably gave them. You know? Oh, yeah. I'm and then sure. you're just going to buy that book like a dozen times and give it to other people as, like, it's like, I've, since, since then, I've, I've never really worried about piracy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Well, Eric, well, what's wrong? You're so quiet. He's waiting for the this is not like when the time when the time's you good. Guys, you guys 30, are doing great. You don't need me to step in. You guys are doing wonderfully. The conversation's <laughs> moving along. The only time you buzzed me in is when there was dead air. That was great. That was very Eric is realizing that it we don't need him anymore. <laughs> He's going to be retiring at the end of this no, you, guys, you guys are doing great. If we maintain this podcast at 30 minutes, you guys are amazing. Anything after 30 <laughs> minutes, it all goes freaking downhill. So congratulations, <laughs> Double Up. Mateo, we can get rid of him and just rename the podcast the Fratelli Bros podcast. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. Carl is doing a majority of the heavy lifting. His answers <laughs> are like, like, can, like, law, like for the, first of all, incredibly informative. Thank you so much, Carl, for everything. The couple of takeaways that I had is, the fact that you're in such a comfortable space professionally now and also personally where you're like, I don't care about, you know, I don't care about piracy. I do it because it's the thing that I that I really like doing. And most importantly, the support structure behind you where your wife can be like, what are you doing? And you're like, I don't know, but I'm just doing it because it's the thing that I know how to do. That's that's pretty freaking amazing. So congratulations. And and again, thank you for carrying these dum dums. Well, look, any good interviewer that. knows that it's about the guest, not the interviewee. So Mateo and I are rocking out in that. No, you got you guys are 
again, Carl has been so incredibly just generous because I don't know how many times you stepped on everything that he's said. I've count, I've lost count. I've been ticking. Like I'm not drawing. I'm literally ticking on my iPad how many times he's and trying to answer something, and you guys are just stepping on it. Like, oh my gosh, that could have been really good, but you guys at every point just want to squash his opportunity to talk. You know, it's awful. It's awful. But congratulations on 30 minutes, you dummies. <laughs> Oh, we, you got to start somewhere. So, you know. Oh, but though, uh, wait. So in in, in regards to um, finding the time to work on your own stuff, I mean, yeah. is that, Eric, you wrote, like, Arc Athena is a side gig, right? Like, I mean, you're, yeah. you don't you have a full-time, are you working for still? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a full-time job in as far as, you know, the thing that keeps the lights on the place. Arc Athena is the thing that I try to do for myself creatively. That, that's oh. been... It's a lot of time management as anybody in this, uh, you know, anybody in this show knows, right? All got families, kids are nine to fives. So there's a lot to sort of juggle and you have to find, for me, it was waking up at four o'clock in the morning and doing it for X amount of hours before I started my day, right? And I can't say enough about my wife who's been incredibly supportive of the entire process. It's uh, and you've just like you said, you just came off of this marathon, right? Where you're like, you go from creative hat to administrative hat because you're doing mm -hmm. the, ca the campaign. And I'd realize I'm not cut out for campaigning. I, I that's something I wanted that. to ask you about because you, you've said on here that you're done with the whole yeah. crowdfunding thing. Is that yeah, why? No. Is it just just too much of a juggle? It is. It is be and not not just because of the campaign itself, because you've got to go into this weird. I don't want to say weird because it's it's like it's this critical component of campaigning. You go into this awareness mode, right? Where you're like, hey, my book is out and I'd appreciate everybody's, you know, contributions, blah, 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 like support, however you want to phrase it. But it's also a different gear. It's also a gear that I'm not accustomed to. Not the not the awareness version, but the campaigning version. Right. And I don't know. It's nuanced. Yeah. Like I love being able to talk to people about the book, but I just want to be able to do it in my own way and not in the capacity that most campaigns go, which is like going up on a bunch of YouTube channels, being in everybody's face, social media wise. And it's just exhausting. It's a lot of stuff like that. And I'd rather do it in the, in the capacity and speed that I'm more accustomed to. And I'd realized and I don't know if it's similar for, for everybody here, but you especially, Carl, just because you came off of it recently, that there is a way that you that is being done right now as far as kick, uh, crowdfunding is concerned, that there's just so much of it, there's an oversaturation. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It's yeah. no longer unique in the capacity of like, let's talk about the book, let's talk about the tagline, let's talk about you know, let's talk about what, you know, the, the summary and the, you know, I mean, the elevator pitch and how do you get it across people in 20, all of those things, all of these formulaic things start to come off exactly that, which is like formulaic. And you're like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, Sean hit upon it like just a second ago, or like a couple of minutes ago, which is like, how do you make it so that people are aware of you as a creator and not just about the project that you're trying to push, right? That you're more than just the person who's like, Oh, and I also draw it too. And what's great is that you built in this audience. You know, you started off with Charles Christopher leading into all the stuff that you've done now. And you, like you said, you have a, a dedicated fan base that's there to support you in some capacity. Mateo came up with the Louis C.K. analogy where you're like, yeah, but that takes a lot of runway. That took years to build that into. Yeah. And I hope that that is something that people are starting to realize, that people are on board not just exclusively because you drew X, Y, and Z for a mainstream publisher, A, B, right? It's because you, in and of your, in and of yourself, like you are a creator that just happens to do all of these things, but also you get to do, you you love doing this other stuff that's directly and specifically for you, if that makes any sense. It makes total sense. I was going to, as yeah. you were speaking, I was, I was thinking, yes, there's a, there's absolutely, there's absolutely a formula now that, that, um, that everyone seems to have adopted. And there's almost a, um, I'm not, I'm uncomfortable with a lot of it. Not just the, um, not just the campaigning and, and, uh, and self-promotion, which I'm also uncomfortable with, but, um, but to, the idea that there is a certain way to do things and there's a, a almost a cynicism to it now, mm -hmm. you know, like I, it, but at the same time, it also, also oversaturation and a weird establishment of certain kinds of price points that I, I can't totally wrap my head around. 
Um, what do you mean but, by that, Carl? Yeah, what do you well, mean I mean, that? like, you know, the the, the economies of uh, scale on like selling a comic book in the direct market versus on versus a uh, Kickstarter are right. so wildly different that like right. to for a guy like for people like us who've grown up with comic books having a certain cover price, it's it's very difficult to justify yeah. for me to mentally justify selling a thing at a certain price, price. on Kickstarter. Yeah. But but the fact is you're not selling a product exactly. I mean you're you're funding a thing and these are reward like it's not actually a store. Like you're right. you're, right. you're accumulating true. funds to make a thing happen and you're also trying to pay yourself for the like three months of free work you've done right on this thing. Well, it, it accumulates, but that's not something the end user is aware of or, or should even care about. Um, but it does feel like this, this sort of formula makes it feel like we're probably on the cusp of something different. You know, there, I'm sure there's a better way to do this. I don't know what that is yet, but it does, it doesn't feel like it can last forever in this state mm -hmm. but you but you do plan on continuing to to crowdfund as you're moving forward for now i do yeah um whether or not i keep doing it the same way in the future i don't know but i think it's i think it's still a good way to um to build an audience and take that audience with you yeah wh wherever the next right. whatever you go yeah to. right uh, yeah that's a good point um yeah, what was your experience when the campaign was going on did it just consume your your entire day yeah, it was it a just, full time it's job. It's just thirty days of of, of um, you know waking up in the well. First of all, like prior to the campaign, um, it's like you know like I'm making videos. I like I animated a thing. I, I did like a um, uh, just building up graphics. I did like yeah, I animated like a five second little. I remember seeing thing that. I didn't realize you did that. Wow. Yeah, yeah it was it was. Um, and now I've got to do another one. I guess I can't. I can't do a. <laughs> I can't do a second. A second campaign without a new. I might. Have you do it yourself, do like even these animations, or you have people? Yeah, no, it's just me. It's just me it's just doing you. everything. Yeah. Um, so just a, a bunch of work before the thing even starts. And frankly, I think the, I think, the 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 roll up to the launch of these campaigns is like, as important as the campaign itself. Yeah, like, um, you, I've learned that too. Yeah, I think you really have to. Um, get a lot of people kind of bookmarking that page for when it actually launches. And then you've got like three days, maybe if you're lucky, like one week of like, of, um, of really solid um, interest and, and pledging. And then like two weeks of nothing where it's just, you know, you've, you're questioning your entire existence and self-worth <laughs> and, um, the and then week. like, yeah, the yeah. last, not even a week, like it's like, like 48 hours of, uh, of like, excitement again at the very end and you're just kind of living for that like you're just watching the graph you're just living for that little peak at the end of uh, <laughs> yeah. at the end of the campaign um and thankfully like it all worked out really well like i was very very happy but um but it's 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 a slog and it really uh kind of precludes you from doing anything really creative like you, as as you said eric your your head just you, you just shift over to like uh, a, like um administrative automaton and like you're just kind of promoting stuff building like it's it's dynamic and that you're just rolling with punches like you don't know what that day is going to bring so you're just like waking right. up wondering what you haven't thought of and like just trying to keep interest rolling i don't know it's it's um it's yeah. but I, i'd imagine it's, you learn a lot in the process of doing so too yeah, well, I to be true truthful, I don't know, like I don't know what I'm learning anymore, other than <laughs> other than like other than how to, I guess maybe how to communicate things a little more clearly. Like, I mean, I I can definitely improve in the fulfillment. Uh, oh yeah, category. You know, like uh, like now that that's where I am now. Like, I'd like to be drawing other stuff now, but like I'm really just you know dealing with printers and trying to and like getting stuff produced so I can get things mailed out to people. That's really, and you're handling all the fulfillment yourself. Yeah. Well, I hired my brother-in-law last time to help me out with shipping and stuff like that, but, um, oh, that's a whole other, the, the shipping, and everything, yeah, everything, well. everything. Oh, shit. Yeah. because you know, lately, you know, I've been trying to inform myself about all the options because I'm, uh, you know, as we mentioned earlier, like I'm, I'm writing my own stuff. I just started a few weeks ago. So at, at the same time, I'm, you know, starting to learn all the options that I'll have 
once the book is done. And, uh, and yeah, regarding, you know, in regards to, uh, the in general crowdfunding, I hear that there's a lot of, you know, companies that, you know, their service basically is they'll handle all the printing and distribution for either a percentage or a flat fee or whatever. So I thought automatically, I thought that you had, you know, a, a you know, you are using a company or anything. No, no we, in fact, we've we've sort of um we we didn't use like uh, when i say we i'm talking andy belanger and i share yeah. a studio and we've we've both been crowdfunding our own stuff and i Who's think he's gonna we, be we, a guest of the show soon sorry to oh is he okay i have to yeah yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely and he's gonna make this episode better than his is gonna be well you, you're starting about. off yeah. by by not having an animal mask on your face yeah you're doing yeah that. that's that's <laughs> like to my that's to my detriment i think <laughs> <laughs> No, I was going to say, Andy and I, I think have have kind of built like a small version of what you're talking about. Like we're yeah. we're we're doing our own things, but we're also running campaigns for some other people. So was did you go? Did you was your last Kickstarter? Was that a lethal thing? It was this one that we just finished. Yeah, but whatever that okay. means. I mean, like it's just, right, right. Yeah. It's just Andy and I putting. Well, actually, so like correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a uh, one of the the offers of the campaign. You can get a mother trucker. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Which is I, and this book. Yeah, good. just why not? Yeah. I just threw it in there for like. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. more yeah, it comics. Sense. More. It's all digital, uh, in yeah. that sense. But um, um, yeah, we just promote each other's stuff um, and then help out with. Uh, you know, we share. Uh, We'll just share all our information and and our and most importantly the audiences. So like we'll oh, yeah. you know we'll we'll um, send messaging out to that's huge to each other's audiences, which is yeah it's great. It's it's work it's it works really well. And we're um we're in Canada, which leaves us at a bit of a disadvantage shipping wise, but um but we're really close to the uh, the New York border, so we just drive across and or actually I found that's the one thing I've outsourced really is uh, we found a guy who just drives stuff across the border and sends stuff out via US post. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ramon using said media mail. Same yeah. thing. Yeah, cuz otherwise it would be a nightmare. Canada yeah. post is really expensive. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the thing that I'm worried about uh speaking of, you know, crowdfunding because I have a uh, I don't know how many, but uh, since I'm from Europe, I have a European audience, you know, people from mm -hmm. Italy, Spain and France mainly. So I'm worried because I see the prices for shipping overseas and they're crazy. Like recently mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've finished my, my sketchbook and it's on sale on, uh, on our, uh, our dealers, uh, website. And link and is in some the Some people were complaining because you know, shipping to Italy was, you know, crazy. It's it was way much more than the than the actual book. So, you know, mm -hmm. I'm I'm worried about that. So I think I gotta find somebody. Mateo, let me throw this out there. Maybe we could work something out where like you could have the books that are coming to the States shipped here to my studio. And for a fee, the like my, my kids could do all the shipping from here, which might help you out. Yeah, just sure. a thought. Absolutely, it's I nice could also do, I could do it from here for cheaper than what Sean is going to charge you. Oh, okay, Eric, what's your <laughs> offer? It, it's First funny of all, that I I, I, do, I don't want to skip over the fact that Matteo had to say I have a lot of fans of in Italy and <laughs> France and all of Europe. I don't know if you caught that, Carl, but no, he kind of like Italy, slipped. France, and Spain. He, he like <laughs> it was you. like right under the freaking radar of just like this is how popular I am, and it's really hard to yeah. be this popular. You <laughs> I was way humbler. When I International that. sensation, <laughs> double up. Is your is your art dealer over there too? No, no, no. It's uh, it's in the states. We we oh. share. We actually the three of us share the same art dealer. Yeah, Jason I know, but I thought, yeah, stuff. but like, why? Yeah, I would just send all my stuff to him and let him distribute that stuff. Just oh, yeah, him, yeah. Just that's skip a box of your sketchbook and uh, let him. Oh, yeah, yeah. He has the sketchbook. He's doing that now. He's the yeah. guy who has the sketchbook. But, you know, in order to, to ship to Europe, it's. Oh, yeah. 
If you want a FedEx shipping, it's like two hundred dollars or something like that. Oh the book is like 30, 30 bucks. So, <laughs> so what no you act? So you're all set for North America. What you actually need is I'm, I'm set for the states. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, okay, that's what I was saying. Sorry if mm -hmm. it wasn't clear. But uh, yeah, no, my problem is to ship from the states to to Europe because my base camp, my my you know headquarters are in the states. You know, right. even if I live in Italy, so it's uh you know this thing is bugging me. So I got to find a solution. <laughs> he's sorry. So popular, sorry about the rant. He's so popular. He's, you got he's out of control popularity wise. And it's really hard to like have a shiny, shiny star right above your head all the time. This is, <laughs> this is how Mateo sneaks it into every podcast. You can go back from the time that he started <laughs> to the time that he started getting comfortable with the idea of being on a panel, right? Like, from there on down, I could tell where, first of all, like the first time that he got this microphone, he started lowering it a little bit more. So it's not in his face and covering <laughs> up his beautiful visage. And then secondly, he's like, how do I talk about myself more on yeah. top of the guests, on top of the fact I mean, that we're bringing somebody special on? Eric, you got to consider that since every time on the show, numbers go up and up. Yeah. It's yeah. a small price to pay to hear, mm -hmm. hear me talk about myself for like, I don't know, like five, seven minutes stops. Yeah, you know, gonna, you know even people, use... even um, people with incredible mental fortitude sometimes have difficulty dealing with stardom, and uh, so <laughs> like, you can be excused for if you look at any not child Mateo. star, you can <laughs> yeah, be yeah, excused yeah. for letting the the fame go to your head. No, he, he it's gonna the, happen. The, you, he, you've got to peak exception. and then crash a little bit. <laughs> We're all we're all waiting for Mateo's downfall. <laughs> yeah. the, the truth. I thought it was Mr. Story. Freeze. <laughs> I'm, I'm paving it now. I'm paving. No, 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 hold yeah, on. That's just the start. Mr. Like, Mr. Freeze, Freeze is just the beginning and... of oh, the okay. end. Man. Of the end. Oh, okay, okay. The plane Mr. Is Freeze down. is just you going like this, sitting on the deck of the Titanic, going like, is that an iceberg? I think that's an iceberg. <laughs> oh, by the way, you know, Mr. Freeze, iceberg. That's perfect. <laughs> perfect analogy. You get, Carl, if at any point, just say triceratops. I'll boot you off. Thank yeah. you for your time. <laughs> and, you can get the, and you can get the heck out of here. Can we go back to something that you were talking about earlier? You did. You did say that. You know. You asked me about time management. What does that look like on your end? Has, is it? Have you got it down, Pat? Is it something that you kind of know now, and you you have a schedule to like? I dedicate this much time for my nine to five stuff that pays the bills. I got to de dedicate this much time to my personal projects. What does your time management look like? It is almost non-existent. And, uh, and <laughs> if anything has gotten worse <laughs> um, as I get old, like every time I think I'm going to get a handle on it, it just, uh, it just falls apart, especially since having kids. It's just like a completely. That really makes things hard. <laughs> yeah. Like I used to have kind of a schedule. Um, now my only actual schedule is because it's actually almost harder when you're doing work just for yourself because no one is ever asking you for anything yeah. you know like it, i can i can turn around um like work for higher jobs pretty reliably now i can like i'll prioritize that stuff just to you know not disappoint anybody and actually make make some money to feed my family <laughs> but um <laughs> but uh but the only other like i i pick because i started doing the charles christopher comic again weekly so i basically pick a day for that and that day is that that's pretty, that's pretty much all i do that's that's the only real structure i have like i know what i'm doing that day and everything else is and in fact i was thinking about this the other day like one of the nice things about doing the kickstarter is that um is that for those 30 days i know what the hell i'm doing no, you know, like i right. wake up knowing what i'm supposed to be doing because yeah. every other day i i wake up and i'm like you know i'm like go for a walk or something i'm like i i don't what should i kind of make it a mental <laughs> list of what i should be doing that day like there's so there's no it, in, it was easier in some ways also to have like a, a regular, like working on Gotham Academy or something, you know, like it's like a 12 issue stint yeah. on something. And I know like if I want to do any personal work, it's got to fall into these certain times. But now I don't really have a lot of that. So it's uh, yeah, it's just chaos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you do well with chaos or is chaos a, a difficult thing for you? Um, no, I think I do OK with it. I think I may it may be it might be. Um, better yeah i was gonna say <laughs> i mean there are some people that chaos makes makes things better and sounds like that's the case with you 
Yeah, but not like life chaos. Like that just gives me right, intense right. anxiety. Like if I have to do <laughs> responsible things and I get then I'm a I'm a wreck. But um but like creative chaos I think is okay. Like just having a lot of things on the go at once creatively, it's a, it sort of keeps my brain occupied and I'll kind of jump from one thing to the other, which is great in terms of um not being creatively bored but terrible in terms of finishing anything. Oh yeah. You know, I, like, I you know I've come to this conclusion myself recently where um having a bit of creative chaos is actually I found good for me, which I, I fought against it for so long. But lately I'm like I just I, I have some things I gotta do. I just get in here and just as long as I touch everything, I'm moving forward. I'm good. Mm-hmm. How much of that is personal stuff? Um right you? now I um it's about I'm doing these work for hire jobs for um, uh, a game, a Marvel game, and it, it pays well. So I, I'd say 70%, 60 to 70% of my time is on that. And the rest of my time is, is um, on personal stuff. So I would have in the past just been like, I have to get all the paid work done first and, and get the money. And then when that's done, I can do my thing. But the problem is I would just line up a job for after that. So things just kept going off on the end. But now I'm finding if I just prioritize, not because something's paying me, just because I, it's a priority to me that I can start to chip away at it. And that's been good for me. Also, I like the, I, I'm creatively healthier when like, I'll be like, I'll put two hours in on inking this card. And then I'm going to go put an hour in working on an outline for, for my book mm-hmm. or something like that. And mm-hmm. it just shifting my brain. It's like everything feels very fun and, and exciting that way. Whereas I remember like working on Batman. It was just day after day after day, long days of just drawing the same thing over and over and over. And it just you get to a point where it's just wearing you down. Mm. What percentage of your personal output is ink pulp stuff like is that part of your personal stuff or is it because that's a lot of work you put out a lot of videos and things you know oh yeah to me that's all just work that's all part of it um like are you talking about the podcast specifically or or just everything i'm doing on social media yeah like all of the instruction stuff like there's just oh the instruction so the instruction stuff i dedicated i mean that was last year that was my job uh, and it didn't make me much money at all. So I spent two and a half years. Well, I spent about a year and a half building it and then two years while it was live and I'm continuing to build it. And it just exhausted my finances and my time. And so this year I had to shift. I didn't like cancel it or anything, but it's sitting more idle now so that I can put my energies into other areas and replenish the finance resources and replenish um just everything because one thing i notice is you disappear like when you're not you're not doing work you you disappear and it's like it, that hurts you professionally and so to come Academy back from, loves it I what's that like like i go through these um peaks and valleys with the uh, i was going to say social media but i guess i mean social anything where like i'm happy to disappear for a long time uh, no don't get me wrong i would love to disappear but uh, like when I, after we will love years, you to disappear, Sean, <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you want to take care of that? <laughs> <laughs> but after spending two years of my life dedicated to something that wasn't making me money, I had to like switch gears pretty quick and make some money. But when you've disappeared, that was a, that was a hard shift to make. Do you mean, come. do you mean disappeared? Um, it, it, uh, to to the od- your audience and readership or or like to your network of professional professional contacts. network my my audience i i po- like you see i post every day i'm i'm very active on social media and i do spend a lot of time nurturing and growing relationships with my fan base so that didn't hurt me um there but when i needed to make money i, I mean com- my commission popularity did grow so that was good but as far as like having some sort of income coming in aside from that, that was, that was a difficult thing to come back from. I did, but it just, you you could see like, Oh shit, that, that, that hurt. Mm -hmm. 
if that makes the sense. The podcast turns black and white. And we <laughs> I was going to listen. With sad news. Again, I don't know how Carl, many of these you watch, Carl. Words. But I swear to God, every time Sean wants, like when he's talking, it starts off great. It starts off in an amazing, <laughs> it feels like the best. Kind of, oh, that's really positive. But somewhere around, the, like we are right now, the 55 minute mark, right? <laughs> Sean will find a way to drive this fucking truck right off the goddamn cliff. That's, you know? his, like, that's his bread and butter, though, man. Like, that's what, just, that's what you, the, original, the original Ink Thank Folk you. podcast. Like, I, I was there for the, for the, the depressing Mark Marin type stuff. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, want, I, I want to know what, what horror. I was in a bad place. In the I was in a bad place. place. No, we're a bit, he can't he can't help himself. Scorpion's got a sting, you know what I mean? Like you can't oh, that's he can't get away. Like he actively looks for it. You know, we're driving down the street, perfectly paved road, beautiful freeway, amazing infrastructure built around it. Hey guys, so Sean's like, I don't feel like, I do guys, not guys, feel comfortable. I saw something. I saw something. I see, he's like this. He's like, guys, this is amazing. This is an amazing car trip so far, but there's a cliff over there, and I think I'm gonna jump this truck right off of it. Let me take over. I'm a Gemini, Eric. Leave me alone. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. it. Maybe there's something that I can uh, uh, follow up on something, Carl. You've been doing this for a little for a little while, yeah. So uh, Sean just mentioned this, and Matteo just mentioned it's probably going to be supremely helpful for them because my experience is, I think, unique. It, there's similarities between my experiences when it comes to like crowdfunding a book or just you know finding a way to get my book out there, than to and with yours. But I think there's something unique about your experiences too. Is there something you can uh, impart? on, you know, Sean, Mateo, and potentially like, what does this look like, right? Like, what does it look like once they start launching their, their soon-to-be unfunded pieces of crap personal projects? What, what does it look like? Um, what, can the, what levers can they pull? What's, what's something that they can do to be like, hey, this worked phenomenally. I think there's a version of this that's implementable and scalable for them. I think it's a no brainer. I think like, I think whatever you do is going to fund quickly and, and generate excitement uh, for you most importantly, and for all of your fans. And it just, I think snowballs from there. Then it's just a matter of like sticking to it and, yeah. and, and keeping that up, which is, I think and the, the hard work. Part. Yeah. Doing the work. I'm really eager to see what you guys are writing. I'd love to see, to know what you're working on. Oh, mine is beautiful. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> <laughs> You wouldn't believe how beautiful it is. Are you doing the are you doing the um the like the Todd McFarlane method where you just draw a bunch of cool pages and spread them out on the floor and then figure out what what kind of Oh no no there? I have, like even though I look like a, a free spirit I'm I'm really you know meticulous <laughs> Sorry <laughs> sorry I'm going to mute myself just really quick Hold on <laughs> He opened that with, I may they look like tubes, a free you know? spirit. <laughs> free spirit Scalera. <laughs> That's my next, next thing. The next episode. But uh, no, I, I need to be really uh, specific about how I, you know, handle my, you know, every, every single aspect of the book. So right now I just wrote, you know, the, the plot. Then from the plot, I divided everything in scenes. And now I'm working on dialogue. So, you know, it's... Um, it's, it's all before really, you've drawn anything? You haven't drawn any of it? Nothing. Hmm. Nothing at all. I mean, did I have a lot of design work and, and... Sorry? Did you do a lot of sketching and design work and all that kind of stuff? I'm going to be doing it. Uh, but it's uh, usually... I don't, I don't do it that much. Once I've established a few things, like how the main character is going to be looking like and all that stuff. Like some settings specific, like a house, if we're gonna be there a lot of times during the during the story. But other than that, uh, no. Like the the thing that I spend a lot of time on, it's uh, right now. I just started, you know, doing the dialogues. That that's gonna take a lot. But until it's not done, at least the first issue completely, like I'm not, you know, not gonna even start doing sketches or anything. I need, you know, everything to be, you know. I don't know the the English word, but for it but. in order, in line, in order, in line, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, Carl, what, what you're coming to figure out is Ma Mateo and I are, <laughs> are so full of shit. We we haven't done much at all, but but we're we're getting there. That's the, hey, that's fuck you. No, no, I've done I've done stuff like I have all five issues like with every single page, you know, with a description of everything's gonna be happening in every single page. So I have that, and now I'm working on the dialogues and okay. I. I 
I have okay. already. I'm like, curious my, my to point see, is we're like, just very early in. That's what I mean. Yeah, but I'm curious to see how much of your, uh, I guess I'll never know, but like um, how much of your script do you think will make it onto the page or like how much do you think your pacing, your writing pacing will reflect what you actually put on that page? Because for me, it's like a, I might as well not break it up into pages at all. Like it's just like, it's like a, mm. I always overwrite and then uh, yeah. I end up cutting half of what I wrote and I, then like I'm do, gonna, riffing I'm gonna, on the page. I'm going to end the podcast on this, Eric, and it's a good one. I'm going to follow Elmore Leonard's production method. And Elmore Leonard, when he writes a novel, he, he has an idea in his head. He writes a very loose outline. And that outline is by no means something to stick to. And he just writes a chapter and he makes that chapter like as good as he, he feels he can get it. And then he writes another chapter. And then he, as he's writing it, he starts to see how these pieces are coming together and then he'll go back and finesse chapters that need finessing, but it's a much more organic process. So my goal is to just have an outline with dialogue, like Mateo's talking about. And then thumbnail the entire thing, which is why I was asking you about thumbnails and then like get the dialogue solid and the thumbnail solid. So I can see this is the book. And then I just go draw it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now my, my method is uh, I have everything divided by pages. And so I have, okay. On page one, we see these two guys, they're at the bar and they're started talking about this specific things. And by the end of the page, they're going to end talking about this specific thing. So the next page, this is going to be happening. And that what happens. And then from there, I use it to do the dialogue. And once I have those two, like the description of the page in general, like it's a, it's a standard book, not a comic book. And I have the dialogues, then I'll start directly working on the pages. I'm not going to do uh, thumbnails this time. That, you, so know what that, be- that, you know what that technique is called, Mateo? That's the free smart. spirit technique. The free spirit <laughs> technique, yeah. I heard recently um, someone describing art um, in a way that finally kind of made sense to me. And it was, uh, it was they, well, they were talking about not so much art, but they're talking about artists um, and how uh, just basically saying that artists often don't know what they're doing. Their job is to not know what they're doing. Right. Mm. To just explore things and without a clue and see what comes out of it. And it's kind of how I feel. It made me feel better about all the work I do. Cause like often it's been like almost 30 years of doing this. And there, there's, there are many, many times where I question why I'm doing it or what I'm, what I'm doing, like why this particular field. Yeah. Um, but, um, but I think, I think the way I work, sort of reflects that in that like I, if i try to do something formally if i try to write out a whole script you know like if you read you know you listen to writing advice or or you try to write scripts in in a way that people professionally suggest people are i mean writers are uh, supposedly working out themes and exact arcs and things and i think like if you're working out themes in advance then you're just preaching to somebody like you're yeah. you're, you're just being pedantic like i i think i think the best stuff I've ever done and the best stuff I think most artists do is are things that I don't think you know what it's about at all until it's finished. Oh, um, wow. And that's what, wow. that's, what's exciting about doing it still. Like, so it's yeah. like learning wow. what the hell you actually care about or think about because over, over several years of doing that, even that Charles Christopher comic, which probably I thought I was just doing a stupid, goofy animal comics, but it turns out there's like a lot of shit going on in there that I guess I, was interested in that I didn't know I was interested in until I read it well after the fact. And so when I do anything now, I'm just kind of trusting that, that my, my subconscious has something it wants to express. I don't know. It it might be, it might seem like the flimsiest, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like a, it's like a space action comic, but there's probably stuff in there that, that I, that I'm interested in or need to get yeah. off my chest. And I don't, I don't want to know what it is until it's done. Wow. Otherwise I feel like I'm kind of um, cynically guiding this thing or it, then yeah, it becomes like a, then it becomes like a rote commercial. Right. Piece of shit, right. You know? That's so, amazing. Which is exactly what I'm doing. So he <laughs> <laughs> just nailed it. <laughs> it's it's fun because we're talk- I was talking recently to Rick Remender. Uh, we saw each other in Barcelona. See how he name dropped that, Eric? 
Did yeah. you see the name and, drop? Uh, and uh, so we saw each other in Barcelona uh, a, a few weeks ago. And, you know, he was curious about my story. So I started telling him. And he was like, so it's going to be a long thing? And I was like, no, it's going to be like five issues. It's like, how do you know? Like, well, because I've already planned everything. I know how it's going to end. So I don't, you know, I know that that's what I'm going to need. And it was like, uh, you can't, you can't just think about a story like that. Just knowing everything and watching it for, you know, from afar. And it's like, you should just start with something interesting and just going. But I'm, my brain is not there yet. Like, I, I don't have enough, you know, experience as a, as a writer. So I got to, I got to be in control at first. And maybe in the future, I'll be able to, you know, to, to get my mind there and reason the way you do. But it's, it's though, I think it's too early for me right now. So, you know, do you, you see how humble I am? I don't, I, I just think embracing the inexperience is probably your greatest asset. Like, mm -hmm. I think you just do That's whatever feels kind of right and see what, see what happens. That's so awesome. not very free spirit at all. All right, gents, it's an <laughs> hour and five minutes. Thank you so much, Carl, for your time. Thank you, thanks Carl. To everybody oh, thanks for having, having me. Out. By the way, congratulations, this, you two. Congratulations, you guys. You guys did like 45 minutes worth of like amazing interviewing. That was really, really good. You know what? The most you popular guys... episode is going to be the one where Eric wasn't on and then he can shut up. I get, I'll, I'll shut up right now. I'm like, the, from, from moving forward, I'll just get work done while you guys do the heavy lifting. That would be pretty freaking amazing. I'll just hey, jump Eric, in once in a while. Do you, have a, do you have a way to control the podcast and see where people are leaving the podcast? And then <laughs> back, like fast forwarding. I, th I think, think once the it goes... moment where you start, like at 30 minutes when you started talking, <clears throat> you'll see in it, you know, a, a, you know, this and this and then back. When Sean and I, I started talking alone, Carl, these guys are getting Carl. their amazing confidence, and I and I love it. It means I don't have to show up to this, to this chop shop of a conversation. You made time <laughs> you, out of your to day, see, like uh, see geographically where like like all the European audience just spikes. At certain times. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because Matteo turned on all the computers in his house to come and tune into this stupid podcast. <laughs> Carl, thanks again. Yeah, thank you for your time. When to end this podcast, thanks, buddy. hit this bumper before it gets too far off the rails. All right, one, two, three. This is. The Ink Pulp Podcast. This is the The Ink Pulp Podcast. Comics. Hip hop. Life. Yo. Yo.